name is Sony Steven. I get to be the minister here at the West Church, and it's a privilege to welcome you here this morning. We are here to worship together, but we don't just want to welcome you to join in with our worship. We love you to join in with what we believe God has made us all to do, and that our God is working on in His world that we get to be part of. And we'll be thinking a lot about that as we always come together. We use songs to help us think about the God we believe is at work open ourselves up to as we come together and worship. We'll use some prayers, uh, particularly a prayer that Jesus gave his own followers, Jesus of Nazareth. And then we'll look in a couple of different ways very quickly at some of these stories in this collection of books we call the Bible to help focus us again on wrestling just for that invitation to join in and what it means. And it is one of our shorter services of the year because it is Sunday. It is a fifth Sunday. We suspend all our rotas, give everyone a wee break, and we have a much shorter service and then plenty of time to spend together afterwards, so hope you enjoy that as well. I'm going to invite the musicians to come and get themselves set up. We're going to start with music, with two songs. We'd invite you to stand for these songs, but at any point, if you want to sit down, feel free to sit down, and we will worship with music helping us to do that. Let's stand together.
Jews would rather die than get water from the Samaritan. Who can you be that you ask me for water? Oh, well, if you knew who I was, you would ask me for water. I would give you the living water, and if you drank that, you would never be thirsty again. Oh, that sounds good. I want some of that. I won't have to go to the well anymore. Go and call your husband and I'll tell you more about it. Um, got me there. I don't have a husband. That's true. You're not married to the man you're living with, but you have had five husbands in the past. <gasps> How did you know that? Wow, that's amazing. Do you know everything about me? I'm going to call my husband Dan and my boyfriend and, and the other villagers. Yeah. Yes, you go get them and I'll tell you more about this living water. Quick, come and see. There's a man who knew everything about me. Come, come and talk to him. I want to call him a for the whole village. As well. This living water is the living water from God, from his spirit. It will fill you with his love and kindness. And enable you to be the person that God meant you to be. Right. I think we'd better stop there now. I keep dropping the puppet. Thank you. <laughs> Our reading this morning is found in the New International Version, the Holy Bible, John chapter 7, reading verses 37 to 44. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. On hearing his words, some of the people said, Surely this man is the prophet. Others said, He is the Christ. Still others asked, How can the Christ come from Galilee? Does not the scripture say that the Christ will come from David's family and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? Thus the people were divided because of Jesus. Some wanted to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him. May God bless the reading of his word. Just got one or two slides to show. The first one is an image, I think. And this is um, a place in the desert called En Gedi. En Gedi. And over the last couple of weeks, for a while now, we've all experienced quite a lot of water in different ways. Uh, generally, not the greatest. It stopped us doing things, it stopped us getting places, it's caused all sorts of problems, and it's uh, been surprising. In some ways, water is crucial, as we've heard in the to all of us, but at the same time, water can be dangerous. Uh, water can be something that affects our lives in all sorts of different ways. In the ancient Near East, in the time of Jesus of Nazareth, Water was as critical as it is now, but it was made more real by the fact that day to day, sometimes there was a need to know where water was. And there was different problems associated with water. Number one was whether you had any water or not. So the first issue is whether you had water, a scarcity of water. And the Jewish story is of a God who provides, a God who rescues, a God who brings them what they need. And when they were traveling in the desert, he led them to places where there was water. Now the second problem with water is not just any old water is any use. 
Sometimes it needs to be, well, every time it needs for humans, it needs to be what's known as moving water or what became termed living water because stale water, still water is dangerous and have all sorts of stuff in it that's not good for you. So you need the right kind of water. And places like En Gedi in the desert were oasis, places of living water that represented where God had rescued his people, led them where they needed to be to find not just any old water, but living water. The other problem that there can be with water, as we've seen in the last few weeks, is that you can have too, too much water, too much water that it overflows. And so in one place, when it needs to be in other places. Next slide. In the Jewish worship rituals that their God had given them, they had feasts and they had festivals that reminded them of their journey with their God. And at each of these festivals, in different ways, water was involved. Often when you went into a space where you were to connect with God, you had to go through water, immerse yourself in water, and it couldn't be still water. It had to be somewhere that water was running into and out of. It had to be moving, living water. And then water was used in all sorts of ways to remind them of how their God had looked after them through these feasts and these festivals. Later on in the story that we read from this morning in John, next slide, we hear about one of these festivals. And at this festival, they were remembering a time when they journeyed in the desert. And part of the rituals meant that the priests would parade around, and people would follow them, people would chant, people would make noises, and they would circle it and, and, and again and again and again, and repeat, and it would get louder and louder until eventually there was a climax and a silence. And at that point, the priests would pour water into a big gold um, receptacle to symbolize some of the life-giving water that God gave. And what John tells us is that on the last and greatest day of the feast, and we don't know if it was in this silence, but in some ways because he said Jesus of Nazareth spoke in a loud voice, it would make a lot of sense that Jesus at this point had spoken up right in the middle of this huge ritual and said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. I don't think we can quite grasp just how outrageous it was for this wandering to the north to claim such a huge thing right in the middle of their temple and in the middle of their festival. That he himself somehow was key to how God was pouring out his rescue and his action and his movement and everything that everybody would need for the rest of what his God was doing. Next slide. This woman in the story we, we heard from recognised that it wasn't just any water that Jesus was offering. It was something that would be connected with. On this slide it says the words eternal life. Sometimes it's translated as the life to come or life to the full or life in the age to come. The kind of life that God made us for. And that kind of life is something that there's a deep need in all of us for that, I believe. It's in our bones. And we only find meaning from that as we respond to Jesus of Nazareth and this living water. And so I wonder if our response, next slide, is to consider where we are in the story. Are we someone who's thirsty, who doesn't know where they're going to get, what they need for their life to be what it needs to be, and they need to find what Jesus of Nazareth is offering? Are we someone who has only been offered still water? We've been offered all sorts of substitutes that aren't working, that are poisoned, that don't have any life in them, that promise lots, but then produce little. Or are we actually someone who has discovered all of this already, but perhaps are maybe just keeping it to ourselves and we need to let it overflow? As Jesus said, it wasn't just that we would be filled, that we would overflow with this living water. So where do we find ourselves in this story? That interesting, challenging question to ask ourselves as we reflect and as we take a step into the next one. Amen. And then by our musicians to come up and lead us in our last song, which is called Great Are You Lord, Great Are You Lord. Let's all stand.